Jim here, welcome back. If you're a diver who sometimes has your trips ruined or after your trip ruined due to ear infections, this video is gonna help you. Today, I'm gonna show you what ear beer is and how that can prevent you from getting these infections and some other ear hygiene tips as well. I have the German accent and so of course I love beer. Stay tuned. All right, first a disclaimer. In my past life, I used to work in ENT surgical uh, devices and with uh, surgical systems and ENT surgeons. So I know just enough about the ears to be dangerous. However, uh, it should go without saying that you should not take medical advice from a dive instructor. So please research anything that you learn uh, on this uh, video and, and confirm it for yourself. I will have some references for you. They'll be from scuba board and from Dan. So first, what is the situation that we're trying to prevent? If you uh, suffer from this, you know it well. After long days of diving or long weekends or multi-day trips of diving, you start to get an outer ear infection, which is painful enough. And then unfortunately, that infection might jump the eardrum barrier to your middle ear, which prevents you from being able to equalize your ear. If you're in a dive trip, that's a real bummer because you're not gonna be able to dive. If it's after a dive trip, it might ruin you for the next weekend. That's what we're gonna show you how to prevent here. So simply stated, what is ear beer? Ear beer is basically a mixture of an acid, an alcohol, and possibly a softening agent like an oil, glycerin. The acid, most likely white vinegar because it doesn't smell, is going to be reducing the pH of the outer ear canal uh, to prevent bacteria. The alcohol will kind of do the same thing, but also it's a drying agent. The, the need for the oil is going to possibly reduce irritation. We'll talk about that later also. The exact recipe, we're gonna talk about some recipe alternatives later. When to use it. You're going to be using this definitely after your dives. A lot of people use it before their dives also. Put some drops in before the dives, do your dive, come out, take your shower, put some drops in afterwards, maybe shake it out, and the residual is going to last in there. The condition of the ears. Now, what we're trying to prevent, as I said, due to the water that you're, you're diving in and being in, in wildlife, you're gonna have bacteria that's gonna get into your ear canal. So here is, uh, you can clearly see the outer canal here. Bacteria can get in there, and the bacteria can get a purchase and cause an infection in the outer ear in the canal somewhere, probably up next to your eardrum, otherwise known as the tympanic membrane. An outer ear infection is bad enough, right? It's painful. It, it might still hurt uh, if you're going to equalize because maybe the infection is against the tympanic membrane and that hurts. So the case gets worse if it jumps from your outer ear to the middle ear. Now the middle ear space we're all well acquainted with because that is the air space that we're equalizing with the Valsalva man uh, maneuver. You can see up here the eustachian tube is connected up into the middle ear space. Inside the middle ear space you have your bones, right? The incus, incus, the, incus the malleus, and the stapes. And the job of the middle, middle ear, right, it's taking wave energy from the outer ear canal, hits the tympanic membrane, and the wave energy is converted into mechanical en energy that's translated through your three, your three bones. If you get an infection in your middle ear, it's gonna fill up with fluid. And that's going to, number one, it's gonna compromise your ability to hear, right? Your bones don't move well, your tympanic membra doesn't, membrane doesn't move well, and probably it will also uh, block your eustachian tube and prevent you from being able to clear your ears. So diving is out. Just as, a, just as an aside also, you can see up there, uh, so the inner ear, that is the place where the mechanical energy of the bones um, is, uh, impinges on the, uh, the oval window there and it moves the fluid of the cochlea and moving the hairs, as you know, the hairs. And then when the hairs move, that's converting the mechanical energy of hearing into a chemical slash electronic energy. Okay, so that's that's the whole that's the whole system. So the middle ear is kind of the linchpin that's uh, connecting 
our outer environment to the inner nervous system. Earwax is going to kind of exacerbate this whole situation. Uh, one, it's going to hold on to bacteria and hold on to liquid, which liquid is going to also make it nicer for bacteria. So it's probably a good idea as a diver to keep your ears clean of wax. Now there are lots of products out there. However, I have an advantage. I live in Japan <laughs> and Japan is crazy about keeping wax out of your ears. When I lived in the States, I had major issues with wax. I'm a big wax producer. And what would happen is if I didn't clean my ears, which when I was younger, I didn't, my ears like every few years would just go solid of wax. And I'd have to go to the doctor and, and have this irrigation done. These huge chunks of wax would come out of my ear. Now, if you're a person who gets ear infections, you're gonna to wanna to keep that clean. So like I said, there are products out there um, also in Japan, um, it's a very traditional thing. It goes way back. So even some of the samurai swords, because I used to uh, do sword training here, even some of the samurai swords used to have like toolkits with them, kind of like a Swiss knife. And inside those toolkits would be an ear cleaning uh, scoop, like a little scoop. And even way back to samurai times, they would keep their ears clean different culture uh, and if you you <laughs> if you're if you're a guy and you you uh, you know you, you meet a, a Japanese girlfriend or you get married a Japanese wife very often that's one of the rituals is that your your significant other will clean your your earwax for you sometimes different times different lands different times what can I say so you definitely want to keep uh, the wax out because that will also reduce your uh, bacterial dwell uh, the places where bacteria can hide out recipes for ear beer uh, I've got some links here, as I said. So the links are a discussion on scuba board, and I have multiple links to Dan, uh, Divers Alert Network, for different kinds of recipes and discussions and prevention that they have. But the recipes that I found, so one is a 50-50 mix, so a 50-50 mix of white vinegar and isopropyl alcohol. And then I've seen the one-third, one-third, one-third isopropyl white vinegar and distilled water. But probably if I had issues with this, I would go with this other recipe that I found, which is 45, 45, 10, which is 45% alcohol, 45% vinegar, and 10% glycerin. And what the glycerin does, as I think I've explained earlier, uh, the 50-50 for some people will excessively dry out their ears and make it red and possibly even inflamed. So you're not suffering from the infection, but you're suffering from the treatment. Also, because it has vinegar, this uh, mixture might have a shelf life. A lot of people seem to replace it uh, monthly. And here, here's just one random story. When I was in university, it was the last time my ears really clogged up badly and they were so bad. So the, the doctor wasn't able to irrigate them out that day. He had to put oil in my ears to soften it up and send me home, which is what an ear doc will often do. If your ears are that clogged with wax, they'll have to soften it up first. They'll send you home for one day. So you'll have one day of like zero hearing. Like I couldn't hear a thing. Only bone conduction could I really feel. I was deaf for, for a day or maybe it was even a day and a half. And, and up to that, I wasn't so good anyway because it was almost blocked. Went home with the oil, came back. It's very unpleasant. They, they had this great big um, stainless steel syringe with warm water and they <laughs> force it in your ear. It's so strong, it, it takes your balance away actually and these huge chunks of, of wax came out. Well, the wax came out and I went, I was in university and I went to a quad with that time. I, I, I was with a, a girlfriend at the time and we went out and was, I was sitting in the grass and I was freaked out by how acute my hearing was because I didn't have good hearing for probably a week or more and I had zero hearing for one or two days. And probably because of that, my nerve endings were like hyper reaching out like, for listening and here, here's one of the things that freaked me out I like heard this like loud rustling crashing and I turned and like 20 yards away there was a squirrel in the grass like scrubbing around for a uh, for some food or something and that thing like 20 yards away was like too much for me and people talking it was just I had to like isolate myself for uh, a few days because just to let my my ears get used to it which kind of taught me uh, what what our senses are really capable of and how much we, I'm going to put a negative on it, how much we deaden ourselves uh, of what we're capable of just not to be 
too shocked by uh, the raw input of, of the outer world. But it is kind of fascinating what we could be capable of. I mean, we could hear squirrels if we wanted to, I guess. Okay, well, I hope that's going to help you out. So if you're a diver who's prone to ear infections, I'm going to recommend keeping it clean of wax. Go with the ear beer. Ooh, yeah, that's more likely to pour it. Of course, see your uh, ear doctor and get his or her advice. Check out the links that, that I've put below. Uh, educate yourself. If you have ear problems, I'm sure this video is going to help your diving life in terms of your, your ear health. Okay, thanks again. See you on the beach. What is best in life? Crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and keep your ears clear of wax. That is good. That is good.